There are two types of people watching this video. You, who have no idea who I am, and the few ever-growing group of people who do. And let's face it, Q&As are usually for that second group, but I have an offer for you newbies. If you're not entertained by the three minute mark, I will do my best, my utmost, to avoid your YouTube recommendation page in the future. And if you are entertained, you will subscribe. One warning though, before we start, some of these questions are kinda odd, but I promise you, no matter how weird a question is, one of you asked it. So before putting your judgment on me, look to your peers. They're the weirdos. And let's get started. What's What's the best book genre? Obviously, it's 13th century French erotica. That felt like a stupid question. It's fantasy. Fantasy is the best genre. I know. I know. Shocker. Gavin says it's fantasy. That's that's great. What? Now, technically, the question was, what's your favorite book genre? But coincidentally, my favorite genre and the best genre is the same genre. So you got two answers in one. That was a three. I don't know why I held up three fingers. Oh, and if it's romantic, it gets extra points. Unless it's like a bad romantic, then it gets less point. But it's like it's a very case by case basis type of thing. What are your favorite? and least favorite book tropes. I am, uh, unsurprisingly, a fan of enemies to lovers, but I also like uh, the chosen one trope, redemption stories too, and basically anything with a prophecy. I think all of that can be traced back to Percy Jackson. I'm pretty sure that series has every single one of those tropes to some extent. But recently, I read what I consider to be one of the best enemies to lovers stories ever, The Cruel Prince. You already know this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. From the moment you meet Cardin, you're like, Oh my god, he's trying to kill her. He is trying to kill this woman. And then you proceed to go through like 900 pages in three books and the entire time you're very confused about where they stand with each other. It is fantastic and a great example of enemies to lovers. Too many books that are classified as enemies to lovers, you look at the couple and you're like, they're not really enemies, come on. But in The Cruel Prince, you're like, uh, oh my god. It's a little bit traumatizing, but you know, we can move past that. As for the others, my favorite chosen one story is probably Percy Jackson. I don't think you can really call The Hobbit as a chosen one story or Ready Player One. I love both of those books, but Neither of them are like the chosen one. They're more like somebody who became the chosen one, I guess, if that makes any sense. You could also argue that Scythe is kind of a chosen one trope, and I love Scythe, but th that one's kind of a harder sell. I actually do need more redemption story recommendations, though. One of my favorites is this Japanese manga called Hell's Paradise, but I haven't read a lot of Western redemption arc stories, so if you have any recommendations, throw them in the comments. Do you feel pressured into reading popular books over lesser known ones? Come here, come on, get close. Yes. Oh my god, yes. But I do mostly really enjoy these books so it doesn't get under my skin as much as it might for a pickier reader and you know i get more into the content creation side of things in a bit but it's easier to market off of already popular things and you know that doesn't mean i don't read less popular books it just means that i don't really make full video series about them but if one blows my mind you can trust me i will definitely tell you about it i promise because the books that blow my mind are the most fun to talk about how many books do you read in a week month year not enough i see a lot of booktubers doing challenges like seven books in seven days but to me, it's more like, I started this book two weeks ago. How am I still on the title page? And you know, I do believe in reading at your own pace, but as a creator, I do feel pressured to read faster. It's one of the big downsides to making videos about books. What's the longest you've had a book on your shelf waiting to be read? Uh, I have a Canadian first edition of Harry Potter on there. So that's from the 90s, but I was not alive in the 90s and this shelf did not exist. So realistically, I have to say maybe like five years. I have a couple books that were gifted to me while I was in school that I never never really read. Who are your favorite FMC and MMC? Jude Duarte, without que- well, actually, Manon. Manon Blackbeak, I am starting to like Manon Blackbeak. She is incredibly hot and equally off-putting, but I'm only on Queen of Shadows, so I am gonna wait to give you my final answer on that. As for MMC, Zayden, there's nowhere in existence that you could go where I wouldn't find you. Ryerson, that's my goat. He's the greatest. He's just the greatest. That's just how it goes. And I don't even know why he's my favorite. It just clicks in my brain. Defending my points is something I struggle with. Sand or Cassian? Zayden Ryerson, if you could read, I literally just, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Who do you think my answer is for Reese versus Cassian? I mean, like, come on, I, I, what? I would obviously, I would obviously pick Reese. Are you, are you hearing that? I feel like there's a decent you chance that Cassian. I might be going crazy. Yes, yes, I would pick Cassian, okay? I would pick Cassian, stop saying that. I was gonna do a whole thing about how Zayden and Reese are like the same character, but different ages, but now everybody knows that I prefer Cassian. Who's your favorite author? I'm gonna have to give you the Christmas is my favorite holiday answer to this question. J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, come on, all of this is amazing. It's beautiful, it's, it's, it's art. I mean, this one is arousing, which is a positive emotion for most people, but you can't beat 
Tolkien, the man who birthed modern fantasy through his fingertips. How do you even anatomically give birth to something from your fingers? Like that is such a better thought provoking example to give you. Do you have any young adult recommendations? Read Scythe, please. I'm begging you, please read Scythe. It is so good and thought provoking and philosophical and, and it's just, it's also badass and it has romance. I need you to trust me when I say this, read Scythe. Also the Cruel Prince is pretty good. I liked Inheritance games. Lunar Chronicles is really good. Ready Player One, classic. Also a big fan of Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I usually prefer fantasy books, but for some reason, young adult sci-fi is really good. Oh yeah, and Six of Crows. I haven't finished this yet, but I'm enjoying it so much that I can thoroughly recommend it. What is your favorite book? Ready Player One. Like I said, I usually read fantasy. Fantasy is my stuff, but it's just Ready Player One is so well done. I reread it every year and I stay up until like 3 a.m. just to finish it. It's part of my routine. That and snoozing my alarm three times every morning and being late to work every single day. It's good to have structure in your life. What are you currently reading? As of this exact moment, I'm reading nothing because I'm making a video. Queen of Shadows, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and I'm also rereading Keeper of the Lost Cities. And I'm kind of partway through Six of Crows. I need to just commit to that and finish that first, to be honest. Queen of Shadows and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder are what I'm currently making videos, like short form videos about. Um, And you know, eventually I'll finish them. And eventually I'll, I'll finish Throne of Glass one day. How many books do you have? Uh, You know, I could have counted them before recording and I actually wrote down, and I don't know where the sticky note is, but I wrote down to tell myself to count them. So I would have a number to tell you, but I didn't do that. And now I'm recording. So somewhere between zero and a million, but likely around 200. What is your prettiest book? Honestly, it's tied. I really love the UK paperback of Fourth Wing, but this is not really a rare book. I also love the classic Akatar covers. And like two weeks ago, I would have said this, but then I got the fairy loot edition of Howl's Moving Castle. I mean, look at these edges. This book is gorgeous. It's literally art inside and out. Are you gay? I understand. I, I rave about Zayden Ryerson all the time. And you know, I have a life-size cardboard cutout of Henry Cavill behind me. And and yes, I did once mention being curious about a male corset. That was more of a fantasy thing for the record, but I know my Twitch viewers will never let me live that down. But no, I am not gay. I can just appreciate an attractive guy, right? Game recognizes game. <laughs> I don't think I'm laughing enough in this video. Usually I'm laughing all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this way too seriously. Are you single? There is only one entity living in this body. Yes. And I also have no girlfriend. Do you take notes from fictional men to pick up women? Yes and no. No, no, because I'm, I'm single. I don't pick up women. And also no, because a lot of things said and done by fictional men in books is, is very problematic and not something you would ever want to do in real life. But also yes, because some MMCs are genuinely just good people and role models. But yeah, if you're reading dark romance, looking to charm a stranger in, in a bar or at a party or something, be careful, please. And definitely don't do the things that they say in those books that they do. If you're going to do dark romance stuff, make sure you already have a partner and talk to them about it beforehand. Otherwise, you are probably committing crimes. How many peers? Piercings do you have? Both ears and my nip. <laughs> I don't have my nipples pierced. I don't even want to make that. I'm, I'm trying too hard right now. I just have one piercing in each ear. How old are you? Well, as of 21 days from recording this video, 21. I just turned 21 on October 10th. That's pretty exciting. A lot of people seem to think I'm older, and I think it's because of the beard. If I get rid of the beard, I look like a 12 year old. So I, I keep the beard. How do you feel about feet? Uh, I have them and they are convenient. So I like feet. Don't take this out of context, please. I'm just gonna move on. Why did you start creating bookish content? The original reason was because I was writing a book and I wanted to grow an audience to promote said book to. You know, that was my path to becoming a full-time author. But since then, my writing has significantly slowed down and I've been primarily doing videos. What's the craziest thing to happen since getting big on Bookstagram? Um, uh, I got to interview Sarah A. Parker, the author of When the Moon Hatched. That video is up there. Being able to talk to a professional author of a book that I door was was mind blowing. And Sarah is such a wonderful person. It was just such a great time. And I really look forward to doing more author interviews in the future. But yeah, 100% interviewing Sarah A. Parker was was the highlight, the craziest thing to happen since I got, you know, big on bookstagram. Do you ever change your opinion on a book because you fear what followers will say? Never. I have some bad opinions, but I would never lie to you about them. One of the biggest things I pride myself on with my content is my authenticity. That's why I will never take a sponsor for a product I don't like or already use. And I'm not going to recommend you a book that I do not enjoy. And if I enjoy a book that you guys all universally hate, I will tell you, or I just won't talk about the book, period. I have plenty of unpopular opinions already. Like I barely enjoyed Throne of Glass leading up to Era of Fire. Those first few books just were not good to me, but Era of Fire was amazing. And since Era of Fire, it's been great. But yeah, before that, I didn't like it. And people don't like when I say I don't like it. And that's okay because we have different, we're humans. We're all human beings. We don't have to think the same things. I would be kind of concerned if everybody thought the same thing I did. Then I would be like, okay, I'm probably in a simulation or I'm a brain in a vat in space or some shit. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very open about a lot of things. So 
if you have any questions about books, I will be honest with you. And speaking of that, read Scythe. I'm begging you, please. That book is so good. Do you plan on doing more author interviews? And who's next? I tried reaching out to Rebecca Yaros, but she is booked because Onyx Storm is coming out soon. But I also want to reach out to people like Holly Black. That would be crazy. Carissa Broadbent. Uh, Neil Shusterman, the author of Scythe. I promise this is not an ad. I just read that series and it's so freaking good. But yes, I want to interview more authors and I'm working on it. I promise. Gavin, what's your favorite part of the community so far? You, the community itself. I think we have one of the most toxicity free communities out there on the internet. And I thank every single one of you for that. I am so grateful. My goal for this community is to create a safe place that people love to go and hang out and make friends. And I want to keep creating content for that community. And I want to convince as many of you as I can to watch my live streams on Twitch. Though I will say the Twitch community is significantly less wholesome. They are quite mean to me. And you know, as we grow, I want to do more and more community events. So keep your eyes peeled on Discord and everywhere. I'm trying to make the book club discussions even better. So we're, we're working on things. How has your online presence affected your offline slash personal life? What offline life? I'm 21 years old. I live an hour out of town and I work on a farm. You know, that's why I do so much stuff online. I'm trying to make friends and connections. So once I finally, you know, enter the world debut, I'll have like a community of people that I can go hang out with. Because right now I, I am cooked. When I finally make it out of the cornfields, I will have a pre-made social life waiting for me. How are you such a confident person? I'm not. I'm insecure about any number of things and deal with a lot of anxiety. But who cares? Just pretend. I have found that I am at least a decent actor. Hollywood, I actually, I don't want to get wrapped up in Hollywood's BS. Short film directors, uh, hit me up. I would love to act in your movie. It would be a great experience. What are your tips on how to grow on Bookstagram? I can only speak on reels, to be honest. I haven't done a lot of photo stuff on Instagram. Be consistent, whatever that looks like. It can start being slower, like once every two days, but eventually you're probably going to want to be posting every day. Be passionate. People can tell when you're making videos about things you care about, and they love that because they also care. Create a good hook. That first few seconds really matters the most because otherwise they're going to swipe and leave. You have to make that first second, to be honest, that first second, super interesting and grab their attention. And you can be doing something super random or holding an odd object, just something like that. And if you're like me and you market yourself as the content, use trending sounds sparingly because when somebody watches a video with a trending sound, they don't really connect to you. It's the sound, right? Obviously sounds are good for growth, but you know, you know, be sparing. And if you're an account who just does sound stuff, you don't really care about building a community or making it into a business or a livelihood, whatever, then don't worry about it. Just disregard that. Do you feel like you spend too much time in front of your screen? <laughs> you have to, yeah, 100%. I've actually been thinking about this a lot recently, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I make videos every single day. So if I'm not on my phone, I'm on my PC. And I guess that's just a symptom of the career path I have chosen. But I do do my best to take breaks, get off the screen, go outside whenever I have time. And you know, I work on a farm, which very much helps with balancing all of that. Being a reader helps staying off screens, except that I listen to a lot of audiobooks because I multitask. So I'm kind of trapped, but I love my prison. So it's totally okay. This is, this is Stockholm syndrome. Do you ever feel like you're reading for the sake of making content rather than enjoyment? Yes, but at the same time, I only really read books that I enjoy. So it doesn't really get in the way. It has not been a major issue yet, but I imagine over more time of doing this all the time, it might get a little bit draggy, but I'll do my best to avoid getting to that point. I've already dealt with some burnout. So I'm really trying to take it easy just so I can be consistent rather than like grinding really, really hard and then never want to make a video again for a month. And Arthur has come to say hi. Hi, Kat. Hello. What is your biggest dream for your content? There are two answers to this question. I'll start with the selfish one for the sake of authenticity. I want to make enough money to live comfortably making videos. It feels selfish to admit, but it, it's true. I have no intention of lying about that. And to be honest, from the start, I've kind of had a little bit of that, like trying to market a book, that whole thing. But it's not only that, right? Like I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't enjoy entertaining. I want to be an entertainer. I want to bring people joy like creators like Jacksepticeye did when I was a kid. And to be honest, Jacksepticeye still does. I watch his videos all the time. And I think both can be true. I can want to make money and then also want to have a wholesome, happy community as well. And it's great. You know, I've met so many people just through doing this. I love it. And I want to leave a positive mark on the world. And this is the first step to, you know, doing that. I want a legacy. One day I will be the most famous person in the world. I'm serious. <laughs> do you want to write a book? Yes, I do still want to write a book. More than one book, to be honest. But for now, content is my priority. I plan on pulling a Haley fam and writing a book after I've already cemented myself in the community as a creator. Would you write a standalone or a series? Both. Do you have any goals for the next year, bookish or otherwise? I'm going to list them to you as definite things that will happen for the sake of manifestation. If I can delude myself into truly believing these things are true, then they'll become true. So yeah, by 2025, I'll be monetized on YouTube. I'll hit 75,000 on Instagram and our Discord community will have 5,000 members. Beyond that, I do want to care less about numbers, which is funny to say after listing two goals that are specifically numbers. But, you know, I think about numbers too much. I care about numbers too much. I just want to continue to find joy and, and excitement in what I'm creating. And I will. And I'm going to interview Rebecca Yaros one day, of course. And I'll hit partner on Twitch. And I'll meet some creators in person. And I'll meet some followers in person. I have a lot of goals. We, we are just getting started, okay? It's just been a year. It's been a 
year and I just started doing YouTube videos like two months ago, three months ago. Okay, we were at the infant stages of my existence. So buckle up. But now we have to ask the big questions, which are basically just a jumble of a bunch of random ones I had. What are your cat's names? Well, that one's Merlin. Merlin, hey. And this one is Arthur. What's your favorite TV show? Game of Thrones. This is actually a Game of Thrones chair. Pretty cool. What's your favorite movie? Probably Interstellar, which I know is a basic answer, or Spider-Verse, or Howl's Moving Castle. Probably Howl's Moving Castle, to be honest. If you could live anywhere, where would you want to live? Japan. Russell. Is, is that a question? That was submitted to the questions. I don't know how I'm supposed to answer that. Pineapple on pizza. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? I love pineapple. It's my favorite fruit. What are your cat's name? Oh, I wrote that down twice. <laughs> Where else do you make content? I make daily shorts on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I also live stream on Twitch multiple times a week. What's your hair routine? I do different things depending on the day. Let's flip the camera and make me look stupid so you can read the labels. Today, I did this Avita damage control spray. It also has heat protection. And then I did some of this Shea moisture curl smoothie. That's typically what I'll do if I'm going to be on camera. But if I'm not on camera, I'll often use this. This is a mix of castor oil, rosemary, and a bunch of other just good hair growth oils. But it's very heavy on my hair, and so it makes my head look a little bit flat and I think it looks bad on camera so I don't do it if I'm going to be filming but I do want to have healthy hair so I do do it other times Gavin what's your favorite color purple is technically my favorite color but I love oranges and other earthy tones like green and brown because it looks good with my skin tone thanks for watching yep I just ended the video like that I did do that I did I did just do that